Welcome to Lesson 38. This is Dave Hill, and welcome to the Guitar Rhythm Course. I know if you've gotten this far in the classes, you've, you know my name by now. I guess I don't have to introduce myself every time, but I kind of feel like for, for new students, I, I like to uh, be formal here and, and tell you who I am. But you can tell I'm coming at you from Los Angeles, California, because that's where I live. And uh, not too long ago, I played at the Playboy Jazz Festival in Los Angeles as an artist. Uh, I played with a great keyboard player that I work with out here in Los Angeles named Freddie Ravel. You can probably find his uh, music on, the, uh, on iTunes and things like that, but I play in his band and it was a lot of fun playing at the Playboy Jazz Festival. Okay, so anyway, let's get down to what we're going to talk about today. Um, think about this. You're in a situation where someone, you're playing in a band somewhere and let's say you're in a club and uh, someone comes into the club and they they want to sit in with a group, right? They love your music and they want to play with you and they want to sing a song. Um, however, one of the songs that you guys play in the group is not the right key for the person who wants to sit in with the band and sing. So what do you have to do? You have to transpose the song to a different key. Okay, you might know it really well in one key, but you might be put in the spot where they say, you know, that's not going to work for me. That's too high. I, I got to sing that lower. I don't sing as high as the person in your band sings it. So as a rhythm instrument and as a harmonic instrument, a band that, an instrument that plays chords, guitar players have to be able to transpose songs from one key to another. It's very important to be able to do that. So we're going to talk a little bit about that skill today, and we're going to show you how to do that. Okay, one of the skills at, at understanding transposition and understanding how songs can operate in different keys is understanding something about harmony and uh, the theory behind it. So uh, what I've done here is I've written out the diatonic harmony of three different keys. Now we know in music there's actually 12 different keys, but I'm just going to start off with three here to show you some of the concepts that, that you can kind of understand. Okay, so I've written out the key of C, the key of G, and the key of D. Okay, now, as we've learned and we've talked about before, in any major key, there is a system of chords that are consistent. No matter what key you go to, uh, they're always going to have a certain, the qualities of the chords will always line up on certain positions. You're always going to have major chords on the first chord of the harmony, the fourth chord of the harmony, in the fifth chord of the harmony. Now this is when we're talking about straight triad chords, okay? Now we're not talking about seventh chords, okay? So the one, the four, and the five of any major scale key, harmonized scale, are major triads, okay? Check it out, when you go to the two chords, you get minor chords. You get minor chords in the three chords and on the six chords, there. so there's three minor chords in any major key. So notice that you might take a note of the fact that there's an A minor chord in the key of C at the sixth position of this harmonized scale, but in the key of G, it happens to be on the second degree of the scale, okay? So you can see that chords can actually coexist or overlap into more than one key, okay? The C major chord that's the, the one chord in the key of C is actually the four chord in the key of G, okay? So it's really important to memorize the order of chords and the, the quality of the chords in a major scale, a harmonized major scale. You've got to know that the one, four, and five are major, the two, three, and six are minor, and the seven chord is a diminished triad. Now notice I have a little circle here next to the, the root name. That's shorthand for diminished. Rather than writing diminished, I wrote the circle. That's typical of how you would write that. Okay, so now how does this help us transpose, you might be wondering. Well, let me put it this way. If you look at the board right here, and I said, all right, let's play a song. Let's play a song I made up that goes C, D minor, G, C. OK? Let's listen to what that would sound like. C, uh, what did I say? C, D minor, G, C. OK? C, D minor, G, C. Well, now that you can see the chart here, or the, gr the harmony in front of you, you can also see that's the same thing as saying one, two, five, one, when I have it labeled like that. Notice too, I should explain this, that whenever you're talking about harmony and you're talking about the analysis of harmony, you always write down the 
harmony in Roman numerals. That's a, that explains harmony in, in a clear way. You're always, when you see Roman numerals, what that is referring to is the harmony. So uh, if I got rid of the numbers here, I could just, or rather the chord names, I could put any key behind this and I could just refer to it by numbers. So in other words, the progression I came up with, C, D minor, G, and C, is also called one, two, five, one. Okay, so the reason I'm talking about it in numbers now is because let's say I wanted to play that progression in the key of G. Well, it's really easy when you can see the numbers that I've written underneath the key of G and you can just go, well, one, uh, what did I say? One, two, five, one. So there it is right there. The key of G then would be one, two, five, one, or G major, A minor, D major, G, okay? But that's not the way it's going to be. You're not going to have all your keys available on a, on a cheat sheet somewhere. You're going to look back and, and refer to it any time a situation comes up when you have to transpose. You're going to have to get to the point where you have it. You have all this uh, harmony in the 12 different keys in your head, and you can, you can analyze a progression instantly in, while you're playing it. But we're going to start you off by giving some, you uh, a few opportunities to do that and kind of get, you, get your feet wet a little bit here in the process. So, take a look at my progressions here. What I've done, what you'll see is not only have I written out some chords in three different examples, but I've put the numbers underneath the chord progression so you can see with the analysis of the chords, okay? So, and I've stuck with pretty simple chord progressions and typical of what you might hear in any pop, pop tune situation. Okay, so with the help of my QY20, we're gonna play the first one. And we're just gonna stick to triad chords right now because that's, that's all we're gonna need to work on. So let's just, let's just say chords in the open position is C major, A minor, F major and D minor. So basically C is one, A minor is six, F major is four, and D minor is two. Let's see what that sounds like. Here we go. Okay, one, two, three, four. Give us a four chord. Six chord. Here's the four chord. Here comes the two chord. Change positions now. I'm kind of dressing it up a little bit and adding some little things to the chords, but we're playing the same progression over and over again, okay? And you should be able to play this progression in a variety of different positions because you know the triads now in, in five shapes, okay? But let's say I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to say, let's play this progression, let's say, in the key of G. Okay, should that be a problem? I don't think it should be a problem at all because we just talked about the key of G. And I've got the analysis of it written right above it. So let's talk about it. If it's in the key of G, that means we're gonna go C, B, B flat, A, A flat, G. It's gonna be right here. And we're just gonna simply play one is G. What's the six in the key of G? I think it's E minor. I think we're pretty good about that. What's the four chord in the key of G? It's C, we talked about that already. And then what's the two chord of the G of key of G? A minor. So we should be good to go in the key of G. Let's see what you could do in the open position. Here we go. Two, 